without any further ado, I would like to bring on and introduce you to Annie Meehan. Woohoo! Hello. Hi. Hi, audience. I so wish I could see you. I wish I could see your smiling faces. I miss you. I miss my audiences. And I had the privilege last Thursday of speaking live for the first time in five months and one week. And before I went in, there was something on my mind and I thought, that's what I want to start with. And I was just thinking to myself, I want to do it with you guys too. So I hope you all, if you're not in your car, I see some of you in your car, have a pad of paper and a pen. I hope you have a pad and paper and pen because there might be some notes you want to take along the way. But the first thing I want us to think about is the letter S. What do you think of the letter S? My kids growing up used to say, my mom does not allow bad S words. Now, some of you might have a different bad, bad S word, but for me, it was shut up. It means your words don't have value and everyone's words are valuable. It means don't say suck because it takes away from the air that people are giving us. And it means stupid because it's a label. But what I was thinking about S words is what S word are you feeling right now? Right now today, are you stressed? Are you silly? Are you excited? Are you scared? Are you unsure or are you strong and smart and successful? Because I think we can be average and we can become who we're meant to be. So I have two different things I'm gonna to speak to you about today, but I want you to do, get your brain moving by thinking about S words. What S word are you thinking about? Do you feel supported? Are you supporting others? What S word are you thinking about? I think there's a lot of them out there and I think there's a lot of emotions, feelings and thoughts about what's happening in our world and what's happening in our homes and in our heart. I got an offer on my house today, so that's exciting, but we'll see where it all goes. I just try to stay open. You know, when you're open, you don't get overwhelmed. When you're open and you wonder, you're curious about what's gonna come, it's easier than if you're closed off and the life doesn't play out exactly how you thought, which for sure this year has been interesting, challenging and changing for many of us. So today I just have a few moments with you. So I wanna talk about, yes, as Les said, the book, Be the Exception. And what I really wanted to teach people, I was writing a book for 20 years. It was called Dumpster to Dynasty. And then a publisher heard me speak and she said, Annie, you gotta write a book. I said, oh, I'm writing this book called Dumpster to Dynasty. She said, well, what's it about? I said, oh, it's about overcoming. It's about my life growing up in a physical, financial and emotional dumpster and today living a dynasty life. And what I mean by that is I always have enough food. I always have enough space that if you need a place to stay, come stay with me. I will make room for you. And she said, well, don't tell us your story. Show us how you became. And as we work together, I worked with Wise Inc. And as she coached me, I'm a woman with, with dyslexia. I didn't know how to read till third grade. And I've written five books. And that's what I love to tell people is you can actually become anything. You can become the exception. But Be the Exception was really about, I didn't want to give you more to do. I wanted to give you more to be. And so instead of doing more in your life, I want you to be more. Does that make sense? Can you be more patient, more kind? And for me, my seven ways of being is be honest. A lot of people say, Annie, I don't lie. Well, it's not about lying. It's about the stories we tell ourselves, the stories we say about other people, we say about ourselves, or we let other people say about us, that we repeat so much that we start to believe they're true, even if they don't serve us. So I had to help people shift their stories. And then it's about be open. Can you learn from people younger than you, different than you, taller than you, shorter than you, older, younger, different? Are you open to learning from people? Are you open? Who are you mentoring and who's mentoring you? Who's been a light on your path? And that's about being healthy. I own gyms for 12 years and healthy is a lot of things. It's not about the number on the scale. It's about our mind, our emotions. It's about our finances, our relationships, our spirituality. Then it was be flexible because the world's changing, right? Whether we choose it or not, can we be adaptable? Can we be flexible? And how about be gentle? Can you be gentle with yourself and other people? with our mistakes, our detours, our challenges. And next it's be courageous. A lot of people like to set goals, like I'm gonna do a 5K or run a marathon. And what I like to do is tell you, encourage you, what if you set a goal that's not about you, but about what a difference it makes for someone else? Whether that's in business or personally, I always think about how will my goal make a positive impact on the world around me? How will my work make a difference for someone else more than it does for me? And the final way of being is really be authentic. And kind of like Les said in my introduction, is like, I didn't want to be me the first 20 years. Now I wouldn't, I'd rather be me than anyone else, even though I'm silly and I'm messy and I'm awkward and I don't do everything right. Learning to want to be yourself, being authentically you, because the world needs you, not me, you, as you are, with all your flaws and all your wonder, the world needs you. And so that was the Be the Exception book. 
and and be the exception really was about in the end of every chapter i give you an exercise on how to apply this to your life how to take those seven steps and implement them so i've written workbooks on the exceptional leader the exceptional sales the exceptional human and i teach courses periodically on them i have an online course but it's really about deciding to break the cycles that no longer serve you, to rewrite the stories that no longer serve you, to stop letting excuses define how you're gonna show up at work or at home. Does that make sense? And then what I wanted to tell you is that really what I teach people is use these pineapple principles in order to live the life of be the exception. And so the pineapple principle started in my life because a girlfriend was visiting here from Chicago and she called me. She said, Annie, get to this store right away. You gotta get here. And in general, when I speak, I love to wear bright orange or bright blue. I love color. I love encouraging people to get the black out of their closet and go put some color on. And she said, get over here. I raced over to the store, drove slow, but right, raced in my mind. And I got there and there was a bright orange skirt. But what was weird about it is it was covered with pineapples. And I said, I get the orange, but but why, why the pineapples? She said, oh, Annie, you're such a pineapple. And if you take nothing else away from my talk, I like the S's, I like the ways of being, but the pineapple principle really is, is what I wish everyone knew every day is how and why to be a pineapple. It's simple, it's a symbol, right? It's on my ears, it's on my neck, because it reminds me, be a pineapple, Annie, whether you feel like it or not, whether things are going your way or not, be a pineapple. And I said, well, what do you mean I'm such a pineapple? She goes, oh, you're such a pineapple. I said, well, what does that mean? And she said, well, Annie, don't you know the poem? I didn't know it. Any of you know it? I wish I could see your faces. It goes like this. Repeat after me if you're brave, with the, whether you're with people or not. Be a pineapple. Stand up straight. Wear a crown and be sweet on the inside. Be a pineapple. It's kind of cute. But the more you work with me and the more you get to know me, what you realize is that I am not about cute. I'm about your story. I love your stories. I love holding your stories. Tell me your story. Tell me a little more. What's behind that story? And what I know is that most people have a story behind their story. You know the first story, hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Great. As we're breaking inside or overwhelmed or scared. And so then I ask, well, what's the next story? What's really going on with your kids, with your job, with your finances, with your significant relationship? What's going on? There's a second story. But then sometimes there's a third story, that one we hold tight because if you knew, you might not like me, right? So I ask myself, what does this pineapple poem have to teach us? What's the story behind the poem? And from the story, I squeezed it until I found the principles. And this is what I believe the principles are. I believe that if we stand up straight like a pineapple, we'll stop doing this. How are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you again. As we look down at our phones, or I wave at you as I'm looking behind you to see if there's someone more interesting. Do we do that in a networking group sometimes, right? So what if we put down our phones and we actually looked at you? I looked you in the eye and I, I saw you. Like I just looked up and I saw you. You see, it seems so silly, so insignificant, and yet it's something we take for granted. I was in a bathroom shortly after this, I decided to live like a pineapple. It's probably been three years now. And I walked up to a woman that was standing in the mirror. You see in women's bathrooms, we have at least two mirrors, one by the sink and then another one before we leave so we can judge each other even harder, right? And, and this woman was adjusting her hair. Actually, she was putting on a wig. And in my judgmental self that most of us live in, I could have looked at her and just made up a story. She had a mini skirt and a see-through tank top. I could have judged her. I could have decided her story. But something about her made me want to go up and look her in the eye and touch her and say, hello, what's your name? What do you do? Quickly, she told me her name was Crystal and she was an exotic dancer and she didn't mind. What did I do? Who did I think I was? And I said, oh, I'm Annie. I spend time on a stage too. I'm here to speak at a conference down the hall. She asked, could I come? Could she come hear me speak? And I said, I don't know. I have to go ask the client. I asked the client. It was a bunch of uh, superintendents from school districts around. And they said, it's fine. It's okay. And so I let her come in. I invited her in. And then she started talking during my presentation. And ultimately, they asked her to leave. But she left me a note with her name and her phone number and thanking me for being kind and that I was able to give her a free lunch. And when I was done speaking, they gave me some gift cards and I looked down at her number. I texted her and I said, may I please come find you? I have some gifts that I want to give. And she said, sure. So I drove over to her home. She came running out crying, crying. I met this woman for five minutes. All I did was look up. 
And she said, my real name's not Crystal. I lied to you today. In fact, remember how I told you I had three kids? They were all taken away from me. I said, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. You don't have to tell me. I said, why are you crying? Are you okay? She said, I'm 36 years old, 36. And you are the first woman to ever look me in the eyes and not judge me. Thank you. I'm actually on the run. And because of what you did to me today, I'm turning myself in. All I did was stand up straight and look at her. All I did was see somebody who felt invisible, unloved, lonely. How many of us have felt that? How many of us have overlooked someone else who has felt that? What if you just stood up straight? What if just for a moment you set your phone aside and you literally looked at the people that were walking by you? You smiled. You engaged. You offered a kind word or a little bit of encouragement. And how about the second part? Wear a crown. The pineapple wears a crown. And what I started thinking about is that if I wear a crown, it means I value myself. But if I wear a crown, then I look around the room and when I get to see your lovely faces, I see your crowns. I see that you're valuable too. And if I'm honest with you, what I want to do every single morning is get up, lay in bed, and eat three chocolate-filled donuts. Anybody? That's what I want to do. But if I value myself, if I decide that I'm worth more than those three chocolate donuts, then I get out of bed. I go for a walk. I drink a glass of water. I take my supplements. I do something healthy because I'm worth it. And then I look around at you, and I want you to do something healthy too. I was speaking at a pre-conference once. I was a closing keynote, but I had offered to do a three-hour pre-conference before. There was a man in the room. He was very tall, like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, very tall man, hard to miss. There was only about 40 people in my pre-conference of a conference of about 800 people. And after I spoke, the man kind of timidly followed me throughout the conference on and off, not in a weird way, but in a way that I knew he wanted to approach me, but I didn't want to ask. I'm always open to people's stories, but I never want to force. Shortly before I got on the stage to do the closing keynote, he quietly walked up to me. He said, I'm so sorry. I've been trying to talk to you. I know you've seen me kind of standing around where you are. I just didn't have the courage. I'm very shy but you taught me something today. You taught me that I don't value myself. I said, tell me. He said, you see, five years ago, my wife died. And when I buried her, I buried myself. And I've been living dead, not valuing myself, but worse than that, not valuing my two boys. And because of you today, I'm putting my crown back on. I'm gonna start valuing myself and valuing my sons. I'm coming back to life. You see, just by valuing ourselves, valuing other people, we treat ourselves differently, which then for allows us to treat others differently and better. And last of all, with the pineapple principle, if you are sweet on the inside, truly sweet on the inside, because a pineapple is a little pokey on the outside, is it not? And sometimes we can be a little pokey on the outside, especially when we're tired, when we're stressed, when we're overwhelmed, when we don't know what the future holds, we can get a little pokey. But if we are truly sweet on the inside, what comes out of our mouth and through our keyboards is kindness, encouragement, love, support. I think one of the most dangerous weapons, sadly, in our society is the keyboard. People write mean stuff. People hurt each other. Please use your words for good. Whether you speak them out loud or speak them through the keyboard, be sweet, be kind, be patient with people. People are struggling right now. We need your kindness more than ever. Be the exception is not about doing more. It is about being more. It's about getting up in the morning and deciding I will be gentle, healthy, kind, curious, authentic. Being Living out the pineapple principles isn't about adding more. It's just about remembering three simple things. Look up, value yourself and value others. And be kind. Be sweet. I'm Annie Meehan. I love speaking and inspiring and teaching and encouraging people. We don't need 40 steps or 52 books or 300 things. Just look up. Just be kind. Value yourself. When you want those three donuts, occasionally have them. Ice cream has been a great friend to me during COVID, but not every day. Go for a walk. Do something kind for yourself. Take care of yourself. So you can go out the world and take care of more people. So from now on, I hope you decide to be a pineapple. I hope every time you see a pineapple, you think of me, but then you think of yourself and remember, can I be a pineapple? Can I be kind, encouraging, look up and actually see people? I find so many people are so lonely right now. 
And I just want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Thank you.